Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just picked up a completely original Condor A350 from the Swiss Army, and I thought I would give it a technical walkabout just to give you an up, a heads up on uh, all the details and all the differences between this bike and a standard Ducati, because that it is not. It is not a standard Ducati. The Swiss background of the Condor is that the Swiss always wanted to build their own bikes for all kinds of reasons and uh, that is why they have decided to build bikes using components and good components of the time to create a bike that, that would uh, comply with their requirements and the requirements were really rather simple but difficult to adhere to. Simple in that they had to be super reliable, had to be quiet and had to be able to chug two soldiers with guns and ammunition up a Swiss mountain and that is what this bike was designed to do uh, which is one of the reasons why the gearbox is a lot different from a Ducati gearbox it's five speed first gear is very very small and it's capable of chugging two Swiss soldiers up a mountain with guns you see here the two gun racks these are not for rifles but they are for uh, SIG 57s, the Americans watching this will probably know more what that means than I do. I have no idea what they are, but they, apparently they are machine guns and there's one on the other side I'll show you later as well. Striking parts of this bike are the exhaust. The exhaust is a um, complicated process to make this thing. It's made, it's, it's spray painted with aluminium oxide at very high temperatures and what it does is it keeps the radiation low, it, it, uh, so a slightly less visible in infrared. I'm not sure that actually works, but uh, the, comp the process was rather complicated. The exhaust is very quiet, especially for a one-cylinder Ducati. So you, what you often see happen to bikes like this is that the exhaust is replaced with a much more free exhaust with less baffles and it's less restrictive and it will ex actually increase the, uh, the power a bit. Um, Striking differences to a normal Ducati, you will see that there is a, um, a, a cradle frame with the engine hung up in rubber. It's a very ingenious construction which leaves the engine shaking about inside the frame and passing very little of that shake and shudder onto the rider. The head of the, of the cylinder is attached to the top frame tube which will prevent it from shaking and shuddering too much. Um, which is another difference, um, but it is actually a very comfortable ride. It rides uh, very much like a twin cylinder, um, smooth and very torquey, low end torque. Very typical of the Condor is the cam. The cam is very mild and one of the other things people do to give it a little more power is to replace this cam with a scrambler cam, a green-white scrambler cam. And that will now, all, so together with the exhaust and the cam, it will up the power from about 16 or 17 brake horsepower, crank brake horsepower, up to a about, I don't know, 20, 19, 20, I never measured it, but um, I had quite a few of these bikes and uh, one of the things everybody really wants to do is just to give it a teeny weeny bit more power, not because they want the power, but they want a reliable top speed. Uh, should you happen to bump into a highway, you need at least 100 kilometers an hour and in the original trim that is not always guaranteed especially if you have a slight headwind okay these bikes all came equipped with um, a comprehensive toolkit uh, it's in one of the bags or one of the side cases with uh, spare lights and enough tools to take most of the things apart and most of, to solve most of the problems that you can find or that you will encounter on the road like like a flat tire or a problem with your carburetor or a problem with your ignition the, um, at the, the at, you will see next to the headlight something which is becoming very rare, which is the original Tarn headlight. It is a wartime headlight and it sheds a very small amount of bluish light on the ground uh, in, in case you want to avoid being seen by low flying aeroplanes. Another interesting aspect are the wheels and the brakes. The brakes are Grimekas, they have been adapted slightly, but fundamentally they are Grimekas, 200mm Grimekas. They break very well. They are probably the best brakes I've ever seen on a single cylinder of this era, or before. And they are interchangeable. You can change the front wheel with the rear wheel, uh, because uh, the drive, the chain drive and the braking mechanism at the rear has been separated. You can roll the rear wheel out and uh, replace it with the front wheel. It's quite handy in some situations. 
At the time, the Swiss Army decided to replace the predecessor to this bike, which was the A250, with a, with a new bike. Uh, they had numerous conversations with lots of suppliers for the parts, and one of these conversations with, was, was actually with Maserati, the brother of the car Maserati. And they actually had one or two prototypes. For some reason, that deal fell through, and uh, they were able to acquire several thousand single-cylinder Ducati engines um, single cylinder Ducati engines uh, that were not being used anymore. Ducati by that time was building two cylinders, round cases and square cases and other bikes, uh, but uh, they were still capable of supplying several thousand engines. I think they were very happy to be able to supply several thousand engines for uh, these Condors. The Swiss did change the engines significantly. I already mentioned the, uh, the cam and the gearbox, but there are more changes. The exhaust manifold is different. Uh, the traditional Ducatis have a twist-on flange which tends to break and so they welded up a completely new uh, uh, exhaust manifold which is much better than the original. The, it has and one of probably the most striking differences to a Ducati one cylinder is this, this actually has an oil filter. The Ducatis had an oil strainer running through the bottom of the engine but this has an oil filter. It's not 100% full flow but it does eventually filter all the oil and it's noticeable because once you open up these engines you will see that it has hardly any wear. They are very new on the inside even though they may look used or old on the outside. The insides of these bikes are always pristine. I mentioned the uh, gearbox, a uh, different cluster, uh, but because the first gear is a lot smaller than the standard Ducati, the crank won't fit, the standard Ducati crank won't fit, so a Ducati crank is smaller than a, a Ducati crank and they compensate this by putting a flywheel magnet on the other side of the bike which is slightly heavier. So all in all it's the same amount of flywheel effect but they redistribute the weight as it were. Interesting find I had when I opened up my first Condor was a rare earth magnet which was bolted on the inside of one of the uh, oil vessels. Uh, which was just there to capture any filings and bits and pieces of iron and metal that were floating around in the engine. And um, I've never seen that before, but I thought it was such a good trick. I actually use that trick now when I rebuild normal Ducatis. Turn the bike around in the meantime and you'll see a few more differences, interesting differences. That yellow thing is the oil filter. The uh, little red oil filler cap is something that you will only find on a Condor. And this is the dipstick, which is a different, slightly different way of solving the same issue. Um, this little hole here was on the, all the frames and what I understood was that it is originally meant to ha have a side stand and because of price restrictions and price reductions it uh, didn't end up to be there. There are many different ways of solving that issue and if you look at the internet you will find lots of places where you can find something, can find designs uh, for a side stand for these bikes and uh, that, that's quite a handy thing to have because they are heavy. Another difference between the Ducatis and the Condors are these are rather heavy dry weight, it's about 185 kilos, 180, 85 kilos. And um, that is, well, 40, 50 kilos more, I think, than a Ducati 350 Scrambler, so it's significant. All the Condors that came from the Swiss Army came with uh, a toolkit, which was quite comprehensive, as I mentioned before, plus logbooks and instruction manuals. The logbooks were interesting because it contained a comprehensive list of all the changes and updates and maintenances that these bikes had and you'd see that they would have ample maintenance and they would spare co would not spare costs to swap out components that were doubtful which is one of the reasons why each and every one of the Condors that I have seen to date are in immaculate condition they will always start first kick even though they've been standing still for 10 15 maybe 20 years over the whole life cycle of these bikes from uh, 1973 to 1978 um, there were very little differences between these bikes. Um, you will see the early versions would have, still have the leather cases, which may have looked nice, but were rubbish really because they had deteriorated all by now and they're falling apart. You will see that the very late ones had Coney dampers, uh, also adjustable, but Coney dampers with the spring on the outside. Better, I suppose, but and this one is somewhere in the middle. I think this is a 74 or a 75, according to the numbers. And this is how most of them looked. Uh, the production numbers were uh, about five to seven hundred every year. It tapered off at the end, obviously. 
Okay, um, as a roundup to this technical walk around, um, a list of common up upgrades that you will see people do to these bikes. Uh, firstly, uh, the cam. The cam is a very mild cam, as mentioned before. The scrambler cam is perfect. It's just a drop-in substitute, and uh, it will give you uh, less torque at the bottom end, but will give you some more revs and some more power at the top end. The second major update is to give it a higher compression ratio. It's standard, it's only 8.2 to 1 I think it is, but there are a couple of ways of doing this and there are combinations of ways of doing it. First is obviously to put a, a piston in which isn't as flat as the one that's in there now, which gives it some more compression ratio. But what many people do is to take one millimetre off the base of the cylinder. Not more than one millimetre, otherwise you will have interesting spark plug problems but you can take a millimeter off the foot of the uh, of the cylinder and will give you slightly more compression ratio and um, and the third option obviously is to give it a, uh, a freer exhaust I mentioned that before and to take this one away and put a normal Ducati exhaust it will give you more noise as well uh, but it will give you less resistance the gear cluster in there now is a uh, Condor and once you give it some more power you will be running out of gears because it will give you more power than the gears are designed to give you at the moment now obviously you can put a smaller sprocket on the rear or give you a couple more give you some more give you slightly longer legs uh, but at the end of the day if you really want to up it you will be having to change the gearbox itself uh, there's an update I've seen only once uh, some people find it handy to have a, uh, a valve release for easier start. I find them very easy to start actually but some people would like an even easier start and you can uh, implement a uh, valve release on the front uh, on the front valve, the, the exhaust valve so as to um, give it an easier give it an easier start. They are rather easy to start as they are today but once you start squeezing more performance out of it you will bump into some difficulties here and there. Well um, that's about it really. I'll just take a real walk around now and show you some of the details close up and um, thank you for watching and if there are any questions or if you need spare parts or if you need advice feel free to drop me an email. Well I do a real walk around now just so that you can pick up all the details. As I said this one's still a little rough, hasn't been used for many years. Uh, probably been standing still since 1995 but I gave it one kick and it started nicely there's the turn light really excellent quality components aged now but at the time they were the top parts top components